there was a double wave yellow. Oh. Then there's a slow Audi. Now, is that a car that, that the whole reason the flags are yeah, out yeah. is because the Audi is stuck there? It might well have been recovering from a spin, in which case you are allowed to overtake that car. And he definitely did give it back. And he gave it back. Now we've got massive drama for Christophe Dupre in the Audi S2, uh, which is part of the VT2 front, uh, sorry, rear-wheel drive uh, uh, part of the race. This is at so, Brunchen yes. on the exit where the, there's a massive crowd traditionally watching this. And barbecues the other side of the fence, the right type of barbecue. But we never like seeing this. Thankfully, it is not on the driver's side, but the whole of the right-hand side of this Audi is a light. Well, there was Christoph does not want to go anywhere close no, to that. He certainly doesn't. That car has gone far bigger than the barbecues. The other side, there was a fuel leak. You would see that burning away. So a fuel line, I would suggest, has, has, has fractured. The car is ignited. And that Audi, unless they can get the marshals anywhere near, he's got the bonnet up to try and... Uh, well, that might only fan the flames, unfortunately. That may bring it. So for Christoph Dupre, absolute despair. No marshals can get his side of the track. I don't suggest it's a good idea to run across the track just there. As I said, it's properly dark out around the circuit. He's desperate to get some marshals there. But that Audi, with every Every second, unfortunately, car number 510 getting cooked more and more. That's in the V2, VT2 class, but he is desperate to get someone there. It's burning mainly yeah. at the rear at the moment, so it's still the leaked fuel that's burning rather than up the front end under the bonnet. Not that it probably matters now, but he was also leading VT2 for the rear-wheel drive cars. He's trying to fan the flames. I'm not sure that's going to work somehow. And Sorry, yeah, the closest marshals to that point are the one on the outside of Ice Curve. The problem is, running back from Ice Curve to that spot, there's a really, really steep drop behind the Armco, so you can't r run behind the Armco. OK, a uh, rescue vehicle, a uh, course vehicle has come along. There will be a uh, fire extinguisher has taken out of the boot of that. But in fact, in some ways, the, the worst of the flame has uh, dropped away. So all that spilt fuel that we saw burning in a line across the grass, as he pulled to the right-hand side of the circuit. It's under control. In fact, it's... Uh, a perp it's a sort of fixed extinguisher there and the marshal just getting it straight and now we'll get onto the fire but i'm afraid it's over and out for the 510 audi a horrible situation and that's automatically going to mean that we have a new vt2 heckentrieb um, race leader in the form of the 504 bmw 330i now which may well have been able to go past but last year i think about the vw golf um that caught fire on the Grand Prix track. Then, earlier on this weekend, we had the 775 Audi with a significant engine fire in the engine bay, and now that fire on the Audi is getting significantly worse. Is this just the, rear, the, the, the mere relentless uh, challenge that this race represents? Because otherwise, I, I can't really explain all of these fires out of nowhere. It's bizarre, and I think you're right. That Did you suggest that was a... An oil fire, rather, than, or, or a fuel fire. Fuel fire, and there was a line the fuel... of fuel behind the car. You oh, can fine. actually see the burn mark in the grass. It's just, just one single line, and initially, that was just burning across the grass. But obviously, far more attention was being given to the Audi that had caught, fully caught fire in its right, right rear quarter, which is presumably the point, the point at which uh, the refueling is going on. But it was leaking there. It was almost as though the fuel flap had opened as well yeah. in some point. And for Christophe Dupre, probably a couple of corners earlier, all was fine. And then suddenly, in full darkness, boom. Well, it, it's just gone right along the fuel rail, hasn't it? From the tank in the rear to the engine, and you could almost trace precisely where that has been laid out in preparation for this race, because that's exactly where the fire was going. And so, such little warning from it. So it starts, yes, from one, literally one of the exhausts, or just above it, unburnt fuel. Then it completely cuts out, but underneath is possibly already on fire there is a faint glow and then boom the whole thing sets fire including a segment of the boot flames licking across the top of the four rings of the audi badge as well you get absolutely no warning of that at all um you just smell it well you smell it for two, two seconds yeah <laughs> I mean, thank goodness, uh, because as you quite rightly say, Jochen, there's no route over the Armco barrier at Brunchen to the right-hand side. You're going to end up True. down the bank and into the trees. Yeah, you'll be safe, but you'll be sliding. Yeah. You're potentially on fire as well. But he was able to get out on the left-hand side. 
And what was remarkable, um, Tim Schrick was just driving past and his onboard camera was showing nothing, just showed the Audi pulled to the side and only as it pulled on the grass, suddenly... Not feeling everything is going to plan because that's... Yeah. Dangerous place to be <laughs> sitting. Yeah, true. Um, you cannot afford to relax at all in this race and need to be on tenterhooks for the next drama. Have we dealt with the history of frozen speed? Does that go back to 2005 as um, well? It started in 2004. Okay. Um, yeah, when I crashed my track day car on the track and uh, on the Nordschleife and then I decided to keep coming to oversee the repair and hang out with my friends here and I decided I better do something whilst I'm here and I thought why don't I bring a camera and, and photograph my friends who drive the track and uh, I got going with that and that I enjoyed it and it went quite well and then I thought once the golf's fixed and I'll start driving again I'm just going to put the camera to the side but then I thought you know what I'm enjoying this photography I'll, I'll continue shooting and I'll continue driving but the truth be told once my car was fixed I, I kept photographing and I never drove as much anymore as I used to drive before and were you a professional photographer in other areas or just a man with no. a good camera no um, no I was just an amateur driver and I think to be a good photographer you have to have passion for your subject 